Hello and welcome back to This Week on Channel 9. I'm Dan Fernandez. I'm Mark DeFalco. And Mark, huge week. We got big products launching, man. Yeah, I mean, I think in the past, if we had a release this big, people would throw parties. There'd be like balls dropping in New York, in like a Times Square, New York City. Uh, we're just going to talk about it here on, on this week. But uh, what's, the, what's this first story? Obviously, Windows 8.1, right? Yeah, well, yesterday was the 18th, which if you reverse is, 8 point, is 81. If you put a point in there, is 8.1. Oh! So, Windows 8.1 released. Uh, most important thing to know is uh, you need to get it from the App Store, right? Yes, it is a free download, which is super important, too. Um, and is available. And really, what it means for developers, you know, we can kind of jump to the next sure. slide. Sure. You know, there's a there's a number of new features and new different uh, things. So improvements from like tile size, you get that full tile yep. experience. Um, start button back. Yes, it is. Um, you can you can uh, boot up controls. to desk boot up to desktop mode. There's yeah. the all apps view. There's uh, the, the you can slide. Your, improvements uh, in uh, uh, performance and profile. Sorry, slide. I mean, you can snap multiple sizes, which means your app can be responsive to multiple widths and dimensions and stuff like that. Right. So the new minimum, I think, is 500. You can actually have multiple apps, and no. then you can say whether you want to be, I think it's 320 is the other uh, size model as well. Uh, very cool JavaScript profiling tools. Uh, new capabilities as well. So building USB or, or HID applications yeah. as well. Um, Bluetooth improvements. So uh, lots of stuff, and really, it's a free download. Yeah. So if you're running eight uh, eight point oh, this is this is like a no brainer download. Right. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's in the store, so it kind of uh, gives you the opportunity to get prepared because it's going to take a little longer than a normal, um, you know, uh, update to do. Uh, normal, it's like regular Windows update. But uh, go in there, set aside a little time, do the uh, migration. It's it's pretty painless. I've done it on many devices through. Uh, I'm running eight dot one here. Yeah. Yeah. Right here as well. Cool. We are. We're awesome. <laughs> so, uh, Visual Studio 2013 overview. Yeah, so I guess one of the first things is that uh, the, the speed of updates. Um, clearly, we just had a Visual Studio 2012. We also had uh, three updates on Visual Studio 2012. And, uh, now Quarterly update, sure. Yeah, and now 13 is, is, is coming out. The biggest thing, obviously, 8.1 app development uh, support. There's also a bunch of cool stuff. If you're familiar with the uh, product, productivity tool set, I think it's called the power tools, power tools uh, whatever it's called. Uh, it's a bunch of cool features that were kind of in experimental mode. Well, they're now a bunch of them there included, including uh, Code Map, where your scroll bar kind of is a live view of all your code. Right. Um, you can better uh, navigate between errors and warnings. The references, where you see the zero references, two references, you hover right, over. Right. Right. Um, a lot of hover over peak stuff. So um, you know, there's F12 or go to definition on a function. You can now hover over and it actually just show you in line on a little pop-up the definition of that function. So you can quickly glance at something without swapping between files. And definitely check out um, this blog post has basically a screenshot tour. Yes, of a lot of the new yes, features. Of all these things. TFS, ALM improvements. TFS has the same peak thing. You can like hover over a function and see who's made modifications to that function previously. Isn't that awesome? It's uh, in uh, and some of the tools I've seen, it's called uh, 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 Blame Browsing. Blame browser. Yeah, you can go and see who made his change last. Blame storming. Yeah, blame hey, storming. Same so thing. how are we gonna do this? So it's yeah, this blog has a, uh, like you said, good pictures of everything that's going on. Much better than uh, listening to someone talk. Yeah, about spend it. spend five minutes. Make sure you know kind of what's new because there's right. so much stuff. Um, and of course, speaking of that, just one lens across this is uh, Scott Guthrie has a post just on ASP.NET and Entity Framework improvements. So uh, ASP.NET obviously having a number of improvements. One, they kind of brought in together. There's web forms. There's ASP.NET Web API, which is right. the new kid on the block, um, and uh, ASP.NET MVC. And they wanted to be able to combine all these. So there's one project template, and it's called One ASP.NET. Right, and you can turn on the features you want. So it's like, hey, I really like uh, routing from uh, MVC. You can use those in right. web forms, for example. So a number of big improvements around that, um, as well as from the, the code focus view. Right, So you get, um, I think they have Knockout IntelliSense. Their yep. new uh, template is using Bootstrap. So that means that it actually will dynamically yeah. resize. Yeah, it's kind of nuts from a, a standpoint of like a year ago, or well, actually it was more than that. We were packaging like our own Ajax libraries, our own this, our own that, to right. like, it's modernizer, it's jQuery, it's bootstrap, it's knockout. It's all stuff the community is used to using. It's Yeah, it's yeah. Fantastic. So uh, huge stuff. Entity Framework obviously having a number of improvements, including 
having async await, being yeah. able to do things like uh, set a couple of methods and uh, I think it's like action of, of T, so you can say like, hey, every key should use this pattern. Um, and some of the other entity framework stuff as well, being able to actually have, or actually no, this is on model view controllers, being able to actually set attributes right, for, for routes, routes that we were just talking about before the show, which is very cool in terms of like, hey, I have a class, here's my controller, and then I can actually set routes uh, just by setting an attribute. Yeah, again, it's one of those things where normally you'd have to go out of context to like your routes config file and then view them all and try to search for it. And it just seems like everything's going through this workflow, increasing, improving the workflow of staying in situ, like where you want to be in the code you're changing and be able to see the information you want, which is really nice. Yeah, very cool stuff. So uh, check out Scott, Scott's post for the full detail rundown on ASP.9 and Entity Framework. We're just updating everything, apparently. So the third Ooh. update, the third update for um, for Windows Phone 8. So I know they're often called the GDRs, uh, GDR2, GDR3. Um, there's a couple main stories behind it that try to kind of contain there, and it's uh, a support for new devices, uh, new capabilities for current users, and then overall quality. So bigger resolution screens are now supported for five and six inch touch screens, uh, 1080p displays on those. So Sweet. It was the same thing as watching TV. Um, where's our oh, driving mode is a new one. The, the big thing I want to talk about, though, is the developer story around being able to get updates. So yeah, and previously, I think this is our next story as well. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So previously, you had to what, basically just wait for these. You no, know, worse, you'd have to wait for your carrier That's what I meant. to choose to have that GDR to be able to test on it. So, but hey, my customers. Like maybe in Europe they have this GDR, maybe in, and this carrier Verizon does this, AT and T does that for right. U.S. companies, uh, and it was a real, it was very difficult for developers. So now the idea is, and you do have to be uh, registered in as a Windows Phone developer in the store or use their online tool. Yes, and Dev unlock your phone, and then you can go in and I guess download something that will let you update to uh, uh, different versions of, of the Windows Phone updates. Right. So you can actually go and have you know maybe multiple devices set to different GDRs or different versions. You can test across them. You can more importantly get that update quicker than necessarily waiting for your carrier to give it to you. So you can start developing on that stuff and making sure those new features are supported in your apps. Yeah, which is awesome. Yeah. So, um, and obviously you can test your app and, and you know, uh, these two posts also go through some of the more uh, developer-centric features yeah. too. So, uh, NuGet. NuGet. NuGet is a .NET framework release vehicle, as I tell this one, and it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, you've seen a lot of things moving towards Ooh. NuGet packages. Look at all that Microsoft Pixels. dot, dot, dot. Um, yeah, so, Previously, you know, ASP, uh, MVC came as a NuGet package and some other things which really helped out if you're using, you know, web matrix or if you didn't want to install stuff on a machine you didn't have admin rights to as a dev. Um, but now dot, the .NET framework itself is updatable via NuGet, which mm -hmm. um, they've done a couple updates to support kind of uh, this more methodology, this new methodology, which is creating a separate Microsoft and .NET uh, channel. Uh, I think they're called libraries. It's basically an RSS feed that comes straight from us. So everything in there is blessed by the Microsoft brand, basically. So it's all of our uh, entity framework, like you talked about before. Sure. And the .NET framework itself, all downloadable via there. And there's some uh, little tips in there about um, portable libraries being consumable and some stuff around enterprise support for uh, for the new .NET frameworks in the blog. But it's cool. Just every, we're going towards a single update method. I've been using NuGet for, for uh, my package management for about a year or two years now, and it's it's fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, very cool stuff that it's not just you know open source packages, but even the .NET framework. Right. Uh, so asynchronous solution load performance improvements. So um, uh, this is a classic, wow, Microsoft fix this, fix this, fix this. But the idea here is um, you open up Visual Studio, and let's say you have you know, it could be that you have a lot of uh, solutions, or you have, say, like five, and they're huge, yeah. right? So um, what this allows you to do is actually 
asynchronously load large, large solutions, right? So you will get to responsiveness, say like the SLN has one project by default and it was whatever page opens, that'll start opening while in the background it'll start doing stuff so you're not just basically... I'm not waiting for my unit tests to load or my deployment packages. Exactly, you code, can at yeah. least be productive on something while you yeah. wait for everything to load. So uh, I think developers will certainly appreciate this and, and really this is a customer driven feedback on hey, you really need to improve the uh, the first time load on uh, Visual Studio performance. Yeah, less less progress bars, less waiting, always better. Yeah, uh, so uh, cool stuff, and uh, glad they did this too. So there have been uh, some improvements done uh, over the past two releases in Visual Studio around switching to a new version of the debugger, uh, essentially, and. Um, Can we just talk about how awesome 64-bit <clears throat> editing continue is? Yeah. Can we just talk about? I, oh, I'm sorry. You're on a 64-bit machine. You can't. You can't have fun with. Former that former roommate of mine was on the well, profiler team, so not necessarily the debugger team, but that that was yeah. I just blamed him for anything Visual Studio related. I was like, I want 64-bit edit continue. But one of those things about moving to the new uh, platform was be able to do um, manage return values. .NET 64-bit uh, uh, edit continue or uh, async call stacks. Are right. Really cool we actually too. showed that right. in, in uh, build on some of the challenges on, hey, yeah. you wouldn't actually see the difference. What you do want to do is see how it actually worked as opposed right, to... Right, exactly. I mean, the whole point of it being async is there's not really a call stack anymore. So it, kind of regenerating that is really cool. Anyway, um, as comes sometimes with uh, building a kind of new version of something, there's a couple niche features that uh, get missed. So in 2013, they've switched over to the new managed debugger. There are a couple circumstances you're going to want to switch into managed compatibility mode. Okay. Um, in this blog, they, they call out .NET languages other than uh, C Sharp, VB, and F Sharp that provide their own expression evaluate, evaluator. The biggest one of those being Manage C++. Or if you want to enable Edit Continue for C++ projects with mixed mode debugging. So like I said, it's kind of a niche. Those are still pretty normal scenarios, but um, hopefully it won't affect too many people. But if you do, Follow the, uh, the steps in here to switch to manage compatibility mode, and you'll get a bunch of those features. Back. And that does turn off some uh, features as well. There are a few that still aren't uh, enabled, yes. You want to look at that list um, while you're weighing out uh, you know, which kind of options you're going to be using, what kind of uh, uh, code you're writing. Cool. Uh, so next story, and this is something I was tweeting about earlier this week, because I definitely think it's cool, because there was a lot of questions from the community on this the previous week. Um, so the portable class library uh, release, and obviously that helps you share code across .NET uh, platforms. Um, and with today's release, they're uh, announcing a new standalone release of the PCL reference assemblies with the license that allows it to be used on any platform, including non-Microsoft ones. This enables developers even more flexibility uh, to do great things with .NET. So previously, you're saying you know we had. You write against License the PCLs. Restrictions. You write PCLs, PCLs and you could write against phone and uh, via XNA like Xbox and Windows. And they're saying it doesn't matter what I write on? Yes. And specifically, there's no term in the license that says it has to be a Microsoft platform. So if you're a developer and it's like, wow, PCL is great because I could reuse this, say, uh, this core logic on, say, Xamarin. Right? And whatever target, let's say Android, right. iOS, whatever. Uh, like the mono tree. game, I guess. Yeah, d right. Uh, so with anything, now your PCL libraries can go non-Microsoft platforms. Awesome. This was really a licensing restriction as well. Uh, Miguel blogged about this and how they're going to be using PCL and supporting P uh, PCL for, for Xamarin as well. So uh, just a cool thing and yeah. good for developers that are building, uh, uh, have a bunch of investments in C Sharp and are building across platforms. Awesome. From big licensing issues to small features, but this is awesome. This I is this. awesome. I really did. I got I got giddy about this. Uh, paste JSON as classes. So yes. This is this is a feature in ASP.NET and Web Tools 2012.2 release candidate. I thought we were going to get better with this naming. Yes. <laughs> um, but what you can do is the, just like in Word or Excel, you have a paste special. You can like choose to paste just the values or formulas or whatever. Um, here, if you copy a, a segment of, of just regular JSON output and uh, select J, uh, paste as classes, um, it'll actually go and produce a C Sharp, or in this example, C Sharp class for you. Um, it also does VB or any other .NET language. Mm -hmm. Under the hood, it's using um, Newtonsoft's JSON.NET. JSON.NET, exactly. Um, which is an awesome library. 
And it has a couple examples in here of, of it supporting Unicode, supporting dates and times, which if you've worked with JSON and dates and times, you'll, you'll understand why that's cool. Um, and then a bunch of examples of exactly what's happening under and what kind of the options you can set. But how many times have you gone to like write against an API and the first thing you do is mm, let me go create all my models or let me go like to like some web service to do it. Yeah, yeah. It's all and then you in. have to play around. Okay, so mm -hmm. I want to deserialize this as JSON. How is it going to actually do it? Right. And uh, th this just really takes the, the hassle out of it. Yep. So uh, very cool. Um, so this is uh, uh, something called new doc. And the idea here is um, uh, really going beyond the, the chum file and sandcast on some of those old things and uh, tree views or so 1990s, <laughs> if you will, and uh, fast indexing and quick search tree. And the idea is you can have docs that can actually be uh, packaged via NuGet, mm -hmm. right? So like you know your packaging, whether it's the XML docs or whatever, can actually be included in, in NuGet packages, so they go together, right? So hey, great, I have this great packaging system, but the documentation doesn't go with it. Right. Or doc updates are here. It's this like go here. to this website Things to read the... Things are out of date, yeah. the, whole, the whole work. So um, uh, I do like it when people take a, a brand new look at, at, like, hey, can we improve how we do developer documentation? Absolutely. And uh, the answer is probably yes. Yeah, almost always. I mean, I was just reading an article today that it was basically, like, just rehashing the same stuff we talked about for years. Like, do you want 90% of your code documented? automatically or 10% of your code documented like for real. It's like we've had this argument over and over again. Like it's it, you're right. Like a new fresh look at documentation, making sure it's included in your new sets of code is probably the most important thing. Making sure it's updated. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, definitely cool stuff. And that brings us to our picks of the week. Picks of the week. So uh, my pick here is uh, the MS Open Tech folks and uh, Ben Lauer did a I guess a presentation on this uh, where they showed off Connect Common Bridge. And uh, basically, the idea behind Common Bridge is that it allows you to connect open frameworks and Cinder libraries uh, to connect so that you can build for the creative coders, the Rick Brazas of the world. <laughs> they have a way to use the libraries they want, open frameworks and Cinder, and be able to, uh, for example, use particle effects like, hey, uh, find where the hand joint is and then do a little bit of an offset and then do particles. Like, I want circles that uh, are random size and random location within here, and that will disappear every every second. So you can look like, you know, you're Ken loading your fireball. If yeah, you know. that, that looks like the start of many of the Kinect games we have, being able to just augment your uh, photo and video and everything with all these effects and throw fireballs or open doors and things like that. Yeah, so mm -hmm. for people that are using open frameworks and uh, or Cinder, mm -hmm. this is just a great way to be able to now, I have this and now I can be able to match it with Connect nice. Data. So, uh, very cool stuff. And your pick of the week? Uh, the, the USB missile launcher comes back. This is something that's been around for a while. I actually got mine off of a Woot 2 for Tuesday, so I lost <laughs> one, which is good why I bought two. Um, but this is uh, Greg Duncan uh, posted this in the Coding for Fun blogs about connecting it to Windows 8.1. So the cool thing about this and why this keeps coming back is because it doesn't use proprietary drivers. It uh, describes itself to Windows as a uh, human interface device. Mm -hmm. And in 8.1, we have some cool uh, in the, Hid in the libraries. RT libraries. Yeah, that we talked about earlier. So uh, this is, goes about how you connect to it, which is pretty much just. Uh, referencing windows.device.human interface devices. And uh, more importantly, the driver's been uh, ported to ARM. So on your Surface, on cool. your on your, uh, on your your laptop or, or desktop, now you have a mobile <laughs> USB missile cannon. Just needs wheels. Pretty much. Oh, we'll, claw, we'll call Clint. Yes. <laughs> awesome. All right, well, Mark, thanks again for uh, uh, coming by, and we'll see you all next week.